So good morning internet. It's Sunday the 17th of May and we are still amidst the COVID-19 lockdown. Um, so I've decided to make a short video about a bike which I've been riding for the last 16 years. Um, this is the Bullet 535 Lightning, Royal Enfield 535 Lightning. Uh, this used to be a limited edition, a rather rare bike, uh, which incidentally was owned by a couple of friends of mine. Uh, so the bike was first bought in 2019, which makes the bike about 21 years old this year. Uh, it was bought by a friend of mine by the name of Amit. Uh, he sold it within a couple of years to another friend of mine, Shiban, uh, and I bought the bike from them eventually. Uh, I've had the bike for the last 16 years and have been riding it. Uh, done a total of about 1,40,000 kilometers on the vehicle. And uh, it's been an interesting ride on Royal Enfield so far. So we're going to go down a little bit later and uh, start the bike up, see what it sounds like. Uh, this is a machine that's been running for about 21 years. Uh, so let's see how it's doing. So this is the Royal Enfield 535 that I own. Quite a few modifications that I've done to the vehicle compared to what it was in its original condition. Uh, I'll try and list out some of the modifications that have been done. We'll start from here, which is the handlebars. The handlebars are an RD350's handlebar. This isn't the original handlebar. The others were easy riders. The original bike handlebars were easy riders. Subsequently, if we come into the engine, and keep in mind that this engine has done 1,40,000 plus kilometers. So, we have the engine head, which has been replaced, uh, the bore itself, which has been replaced. So, now we're running on a 500cc bore. This is the cast iron version, uh, not the aluminium version. You have the neutral finder which comes in all the old versions of the bullet you'll notice that the gear lever is on the right hand side of the vehicle and not the left side unlike normal vehicles the gear ratio also is uh, slightly higher compared to the newer vehicles and uh, this is a gear system of one up three down so it's a four geared vehicle so besides the engine block which is pretty much changed internally we have changed the, the crank the crank rod basically has been changed besides the crank rod i've also had the bearings on the crank changed uh, put on an imported set of heavier bearings to take the load of the engine uh, somehow the torque seemed to always play up with the crank bearings had a play on the crank shaft uh, I feel that, that this is one of the inherent flaws of the vehicle from when it was initially made. Another flaw which uh, I had corrected is essentially the carburetor and how the carburetor connects to the engine intake. Uh, so if you notice over here, I've put in an aluminium intake system. Uh, so the carburetor sits onto the aluminium intake system originally uh, this this used to be like what we have over here on the left hand side which is a rubber uh, intake mount uh, the problem is usually when the bike was not tuned very well you'd have the bike backfiring and you'd have the carburetor pop off completely and hang down here uh, so unless you were totally adept in terms of fixing your own bike and carburetor you'd have a problem with this uh, with the carburetor coming out constantly so I had this changed put this in uh, so that fixed that problem the exhaust system uh, I don't think that there is a Royal Enfield rider out there that hasn't thought of playing with the exhaust system uh, so what I've done is I've put in a conical type system this is a free flow exhaust so there are no internal baffles as such uh, I find that the bike picks up a lot faster uh, with, with the free flow exhaust in comparison to the original exhaust. The original exhaust used to be um, an old long bottleneck uh, silencer, which was which kept the bike very silent, uh, but also I kind of feel stifled the bike to a certain extent. 
In terms of braking, uh, we have drum brakes, conventional drum brakes, both front and rear. So let's do a quick start up for the bike. While we're at it, you can take a look at the, these are the original meters that came with the bike. There is an emblem that is missing from here. So normally what you would have is, uh, you would have this little plate that used to extend from here to here and come over and sit into this. So pretty much like what you had the emblem on the side, you would have another emblem which, which came up over here. Uh, I don't think that there were many other Royal Enfields that had this kind of badge work across it. Let's get the ignition turned on. Now you'll notice that I've also set up an extra amp meter here. Uh, the reason is because the amp meter that exists, uh, you don't see too much play on the needle, uh, which was another inherent flaw with this particular bike. Uh, so let's get the Kickstarter out. And we're going to decompress to get the amps into the center position. Which it, which it has now come into and Now that we've got it started, let's gear up and go for a ride. How does she handle at corners? What's it like maneuvering this bike in traffic? In terms of bad roads, the bike handles relatively well. Uh, the setup in terms of the suspension is rather on the softer side. I have had the rear shocks changed and I am currently using the Royal Enfield gas, gas filled shocks. Um, the handlebars along with uh, the current suspension and the current setup of the bike uh, really help in handling bad roads. Uh, though at times you will see uh, that you need to stand up and uh, take the larger bumps otherwise you will have the front end uh, bot bottoming out. Uh, the bike was a brilliant all-rounder, you know, when it was launched, it's a great all-rounder even today, uh, considering the, you know, other bikes that you have in the market. Uh, the bike itself, 21 years old today, and it's been 16 years of me riding the Royal Enfield. It's been an absolute pleasure so far, and look forward to many more years on this machine.